For generations, songs such as My Adidas by Run DMC, Air Force One by Nelly, and Jumpman by Drake and Future influenced both hip hop and sneaker culture. Both of these cultures have been near and dear to me in my childhood. And as I stand before you today, as Kai the Chemist, founder of Steam Sneakerheads, certified, stamped, master chemist, and science communicator, for the past two years, I've used my culture as a way to customize my future. Now, when people ask me, girl, what is a science communicator? I tell them to picture Bill Nye, the science guy. But remix that with me being the female, black, and Filipino version. But see, I'm bringing my own flair, flavor, and seasons. Using hip hop and sneaker culture to teach chemistry to the world. And through my STEAM sneaker art workshops, I expose kids to the different chemistries found in our sneakers. In this TED Talk, we'll explore how embracing your culture and customizing it can create resilience in individuals and communities alike. Now, as any good scientist knows, you need facts to lay a solid foundation. To start, let's define culture. And this is where I'll consult the literature. According to the American Psychological Association, APA for short, culture is defined as the values, beliefs, language, rituals, traditions, and other behaviors passed from one generation to another within any social group. If you ask a scientist, and more specifically a biologist, they'll tell you that culture is essential for growth conditions. However, my definition of culture is a combination of both. Culture to me is defined as a representation of my heritage, my memories, my community, and essential in order to help us grow to be better versions of ourselves. Growing up, I have vivid memories of my dad dropping me and my sisters off to school, bumping Kanye West, Jay-Z, Snoop, T.I., Dr. Dre, and one of his top three, E-40. <laughs> also, as a part of my culture, we would have family cookouts on the regular. There was a guarantee for good food coming off the grill, bumping music, and lots of line dancing. This is a culture that is true to me. Now, when it comes to sneaker culture, AKA shoe game, my connection to sneakers started in like middle high school-ish. It's important here that I provide some context. I am a 90s baby. Shout out to my millennials. <laughs> but I'll never forget the first time I heard the song Air Force Ones. See, this song put the style of sneaker on another level. Anybody who was somebody had a pair of ups, which is what we call them where I'm from, a small town called York, PA. Okay, so plot twist. I remember it was time to go school shopping, and I asked my mom if I could get my first pair of ups. You know what she said to me? Do you have Air Force One money? And so I digressed. 
and got a cheaper pair of shoes. But see, I really wanted a pair of ups. It was the move. And I was so motivated that I started hustling. I would ask my mom to take me to the dollar store. And yes, this is back when things were actually a dollar and not a dollar 25. And I would get the four pack of gum and flip it. It didn't take long at all. And before I knew it, I made enough money and bought my first pair of ups. But see, once I got them, I realized very quickly that I really didn't want to be like everyone else. And so I got creative. I used markers, gems, and other crafts to customize my shoes. I even took old earrings and put them in the shoelaces. I really thought I was her. Until I got to school the next day and got grinded up. But see, that didn't stop me. Because one thing about your girl is that I keep the heat on the feet. Now, I'd like to take a moment here and share that my first pair of ups served as inspiration for my first prototype for my STEAM sneaker art workshops. But with this and similar trends gave rise to a new era of sneakerheads. Sneakerheads are people that sell, study, collect, trade, and love sneakers. You could think about us as the experts on sneakers. Now, time for some more facts. According to a report by the Allied Market Research Group, the global footwear industry was estimated to be valued at $409.5 billion in 2022. This number is expected to increase to $725.1 billion in 2032. All I know is that math is mathing. Various rappers, artists, and athletes use their culture to customize and influence the sneaker industry. Now let's define customization. According to dictionary.com, customization is defined as to build or modify due to individual or personal specifications. My definition of customization is to either remix something that already exists or to completely create something that's new. Customization can take place in education, research, art, the sneaker industry, and many other domains. For example, there's this really cool chemist by the name of Dr. Sabrina Collins. She uses pop culture, and more specifically, from the Black Panther movies, the element vibranium, to teach chemistry and periodic trends to her students. Let's also not forget how sneaker companies are constantly customizing shoes. I don't know if y'all peeped Meg Thee Stallion's collaboration with Nike last month, but she literally had it so that you could customize your shoes with preloaded images based on her branding. Like, bruh. We see the same thing when other artists and athletes collaborate with sneaker companies. For my process of customization, I teach kids about the science of sneakers. They then get to do a hands-on activity. And the best part is they then get to create and customize their very own piece of tangible steam sneaker 
artwork. Now, my idea was inspired from my experiences of holding it down out here in my classes to provide the context. When I was an undergrad, there were less than 10% of black people in my department. When I got to graduate school, less than five. Both of these numbers get even smaller when you account for the fact that I am a black woman in the STEM sciences. And so I was motivated to use cultures that are true to me, to encourage more people that look like me to pull up to the STEM sciences. I took sneaker culture, something that I love, and used it as a medium to introduce chemistry to underrepresented, underserved, and marginalized communities. I am customizing teaching, which we need to do academically in order to reach more students, especially those from different cultures. Now, moment of transparency. When you're customizing things, and especially using culture, you gotta have resilience. New ideas and fresh perspectives are not always welcomed. Let's define resilience. According to APA, resilience is defined as the process and outcome of successfully adapting to difficult or challenging life obstacles. For example, it was my freshman year of college. Your girl was struggling. The material, dry and unengaging. And I really had a difficult time connecting to the material. I started failing classes, and this landed me on academic probation. And I'll never forget, my college advisor told me that I should completely consider changing my major because I'd never make it as a chemist. See, this is where that resilience kicked in. Not only was I the first person in my department to graduate with a major in chemistry pre-pharmacy, but I also picked up one and a half minors in biology and mathematics. By the time senior year rolled around though, that GPA was not given what it needed to give. And I was scared, I was real scared to apply to graduate school. But then I learned about this really cool thing called the American Chemical Society Bridge Program. See, this is a program that offers underrepresented students a chance to go to graduate school regardless of research experience or exposure. And with that, I was blessed with a fully funded fellowship to Indiana University. But when I got there, I was back to the same situation from undergrad. There was barely anyone of color in the department, not to mention the lack of culture in my research, materials, and classroom. Now, the big difference between undergrad and graduate school is research. So I was assigned a project based on what I thought I was interested in, but I realized very quickly that something had to give. Being in a lab all day was not the move for me. But shout out to my lab chemists and scientists. Y'all holding down the field. I see you, boo. But me? Mm-mm. Plus, I was still curious about a systemic issue. Seeing more representation in the field. And with that, I mustered up the courage and asked my advisors 
about pursuing my own research idea that would revolutionize the way that chemistry is taught to the world. The feedback I received, no. <laughs> Sneaker culture? Chemistry? I was even encouraged to keep my head down and take on a pre-assigned project like everyone else. But again, that resilience kicked back in. And although the people around me didn't support me, I took action. I called up the head honchos at ACS on the national level, and I asked them for their support. The feedback I received was that as long as my research idea expressed my love and interest for I had full creative ability. And from there, it was a wrap. I am so proud to share that what started out as an idea has now become my master's thesis. Business, STEAM sneakerheads, foundation for my career as a science communicator, and soon to be doctoral dissertation. I want you to take a moment and think about your favorite pair of sneakers. Consider the science that it took to make them. Some of the same materials found in our sneakers are the same materials found in our hair and skincare products. Another question, what influences inspired you to buy them? Was it your favorite artist, athlete, maybe a sneaker trend? I say this because I want you to understand what culture means to a people. Showing up as our true and authentic selves and embracing our culture serves as a foundation to be customized. I say this because I want you to understand what customization means. Because for generations, we identify with things being a part of who we are. I say this because I want you to understand resilience. If we have more underrepresented, underserved, and marginalized communities in the sciences, we will be a better world because of it. Because we bring diversity. We bring a component of culture that is needed. And so I challenge you to consider an aspect of yourself and your culture. How can you customize that and bring it to your respective workplace, classroom, research lab, personal life? And when you do, execute it, share it with the world, and use the hashtag customize it. Thank you.